on the nuclear energy and we want to cross over to our city center studios where we have on standby Rafael Chesori, who is a nuclear expert, just to help us demystify issues to do with nuclear energy. And uh, many thanks, uh, Rafael, for joining us. Well, in the course of this week, the president held talks with uh, his uh, economics team and also the nuclear, sorry, the energy docket, which is, uh, of course, uh, led by none other than the CS4 Energy and Petroleum, that being Charles Keter. And uh, some of the emerging issues that Kenya continues to face is the challenge around power supply and installed power in the country. Perhaps how critical will nuclear power be if Kenya eventually adopts nuclear energy? Uh, well, uh, thank you so much for having me at this hour in your studios. Perhaps maybe I can say uh, I'm here to represent uh, the Young Generation Networks. Uh, I am uh, the Secretary General for African Young Generation in Nuclear and also representing the National Network as the Vice President. Well, uh, regarding the issue or the question on uh, nuclear energy developments, uh, well, uh, the country is uh, actually making uh, significant steps towards that, and that, uh, as we all know, we have uh, uh, energy challenges as a country. But what is very important and should be clear is that uh, with uh, nuclear energy in our uh, energy mix, we are able to have that base load supply. Currently, I think we are doing badly because uh, uh, we need uh, a lot of power. There's a lot of demand for power. And uh, what is currently in our energy mix is not sufficient for any industrial uh, growth. As we know, we have the Vision 2030 where energy is the key enabler of our industrialization process. And, so uh, uh, I would like just to highlight that, uh, yes. So, uh, Rafael, looking at uh, nuclear power, um, Kenya is, uh, of course, uh, in the pipeline towards going nuclear, say, come 2022. That is the projected timeline. And uh, how significant will an additional, say, 2,000 megawatts from nuclear, what does it mean for Kenya as an economy? Yeah, uh, actually, Kenya will be joining other members who have already uh, utilized nuclear energy, I mean electricity generation via nuclear uh, processes. And uh, as you mentioned, uh, we need uh, power. As a country, we need power to uh, power uh, our industrial processes. And uh, this actually will uh, break down the cost. As uh, we understand, we have the Nuclear Electricity Board that is a, a nuclear, Kenyan Nuclear Electricity Board, which is charged with the mandate to promote nuclear energy development. Actually, the board transitioned from a electricity project, a nuclear electricity project committee, to a nuclear electricity board. And they are doing a quite a number of things to lay the necessary uh, frameworks to see that the country can go nuclear electricity generation. And, uh, as you know, we need a uh, quiet, uh, there is a lot of demand for energy supply. Our industries have uh, a lot of uh, costs in that in electricity uh, bills and whatever. But with nuclear electricity uh, in our energy mix, the cost will come down and the production will be, uh, it will be easy, uh, easy to produce. Uh, at the same time, generating uh, job opportunities for young, uh, uh, young people in our country and actually in the region at large. So perhaps uh, what is important in this is that uh, when we look into nuclear, we are not narrowing down to nuclear electricity. We have a number of applications, uh, quiet uh, uh, applications of nuclear techniques which uh, when we talk of promoting nuclear, we are not limiting ourselves to nuclear electricity generations. Yes. 
And a final question, uh, Raphael. Um, one of the big conversations around nuclear energy is the safety aspect. It's perceived to be a risky undertaking. And uh, will this be featuring in the upcoming nuclear conference as uh, various uh, stakeholders will be meeting? Uh, I would like to say that uh, the question of nuclear safety is a uh, is something that we cannot actually uh, downplay because it's key. Uh, th that uh, what happens is that uh, we need actually to do a lot of advocacy surrounding nuclear uh, uh, science and technology. Like in our upcoming conference, we are targeting uh, various uh, stakeholders. I mean, participants from uh, participants from uh, uh, various fields. We target uh, journalists. We target uh, those from academia, from the industry. What we need uh, actually to understand at the end of the day is that uh, issues with nuclear advocacy and communication is all about to get the factual information regarding this nuclear technology, so that. Even when it comes to uh, uh, safety issues, especially to do with uh, how we run the technology and even managing the waste, be it the nuclear waste from uh, electricity generation, I mean that is the nuclear power plants, or even the nuclear waste from uh, oscillators, I mean uh, in the health applications, we can be at a position to manage this uh, with a lot of expertise because at the end of the day, we need to have a proper way of running the whole industry. Well, indeed, many thanks there, Rafael, for that interesting conversation around nuclear energy. And we definitely will be continuing to uh, take a deeper look into matters with nuclear power, bearing in mind that uh, other countries like South Africa, Ghana, Egypt, have already gone the nuclear way, with South Africa having close to 40,000 megawatts.